Uh, good morning, folks. Uh, we have Hockey Bones back on the table today. It was originally the face-off game. That's the one that I have. I also have the Hockey Bones PDF game. Um, we are playing game two between Minnesota and Pittsburgh. I had so much fun with game one that I thought I'd play a second one. Here's how game one finished off. This is what my score sheet looks like. I also changed the score sheet a little bit. Added some yellow tinge here to help differentiate between the teams and uh, the shifts and stuff. So that is at gitchplay.wordpress.com. If you go to the free section, you'll be, have to, you'll be able to get the score sheet. So here's how game one ended. It was 6-3 for Minnesota. They scored three power play goals. Huge factor in the hockey game. And this is just what it's going to look like at the end. So I keep track of shifts. And you can see... Uh, Mullen, Stevens, Francis, Teglin, Eddie, Trache, and Roberts were all used up all their shifts. What I do is just put them off to the side and use the other players and try and get them to use all their shifts. Bad job of coaching with uh, Pittsburgh. Lemieux only had nine of his 11 shifts. Uh, Coffee Samuelson were way short. So again, I probably had it was a big factor in this hockey game, but I hadn't played this game in so long that... Um, I was sort of getting some rust off as I played. So I changed the lines up a little bit for game number two. Start with a fresh sheet. Let's see if Pittsburgh can come back. And it's kind of funny looking back at the standings back in the day. Minnesota was below 500 and they made it to the Stanley Cup final. Uh, Pittsburgh only finished with 88 points. So interesting uh, the way it, it went. So we're going to get right to it this morning. And we're going to start off with a face-off. And again, for Hockey Bones, you always read it. Always your rolls are always going to be blue, white, and red. I noticed in my face-off yesterday, I messed up. So we're going to read 1-7 on a face-off. So 1-7 on a face-off is going to be right wing to the home team. So right wing on the home team is going to pick up the puck. It's going to go to Mark Recchi. And we're just going to roll. Recchi move to the top line. We're going to have a 2-8. So for Recky's card, a 2-8 is going to be an 8. So we're going to check the defense. And for the right winger, you're going to check left D, left winger. You're going to add him up and modified for the center. So he is actually going to be adjusted to a 2. So we have 5 plus 2 is a 7. And a 2-8, a 10 is higher. So Recky's going to get a shot. So I am, as I play, I am going to check off a time sequence and give Recky a shot on that. And Recky's range is going to be, since normally it's three to six, power play would be four to four. If he plays a point on the power play, he's one to eight. And shorthanded, he's one to three. So one thing I really like about the game, is they have different shooting um, percentages for different rates. So Recky's got a shot, three to six. It's an inside in range shot, and it is in range. All of a sudden, it's a two. Here comes Pittsburgh making a... Big statement right off the bat, a 4-8. Again, for the goalies, you're going to read 4 and 8. So 4-8, excuse my elasticity, is going to be an F, a face-off. Never change, put your cards in elastics. Put them in a box. I now put them into little, I get library envelopes. And do I have an example here? I think I do. So this is how I now store my face-off cards and my Stratomatic cards. I get these library envelopes and the cards fit nice and uh, tight into these library envelopes. And then I don't have to use elastics and I don't have to make a mess. So Casey's gonna make a save and a face-off and here comes the next draw. We got a three, five. So a face-off on three, five is gonna go to lefty on the home team. So Pittsburgh, again, has got the puck. Paul Coffey picks it up. I'm just going to make a roll so don't forget. I'm going to tick that off. And we have a 1-6. So 1-6 is star H. Star means a shot only if he's at home. Coffey is at home. So he's going to get a shot on net. His range is 2-3. to three, And that's out of range. So he takes a shot. And one thing I should do too is sometimes I keep track with little dots of in-range shots. So for Recky, if you want to see how many in-range shots he made for the goalie making saves, that's what I used to do. I'm sort of getting all the rust off on how I used to play. Uh, so the shot is out of range. 
goes to Casey's card. A 3-5 is going to be a right D. So Sean Chambers picks it up, brings it back for the North Stars. I'm going to roll. I'm going to check off the timer. 6-12 on Chambers' card is going to be a 4. So again, for him, I'm going to check these two people in an adjusted center. So that would be a three, So and Lemuse is zero. So it's gonna be a shot on net for Chambers. So he's gonna shoot. His range as a D-man is one to five, and a three on the red die. And oh, one to six. So it's not in range, but pretty close. And three, seven on Barrasso's card means that it's gonna be a rebound shot. And the rebound, you're gonna check the red die, number five. It's going to go to the right D. So Chambers is going to get his own rebound. But before you do the rebound shot, you got to see if Pittsburgh is going to clear it. And to clear it, you take a look at the d man's small numbers. So 5 and a 1 is a 6. You then check and see if anybody is screening. And Pittsburgh has bellow screening, so that will move that 6 down to a 5. And then we're going to check the clearing chart. So a five would be three to seven. He is going to clear the puck. And it's a five. So it's not in range. So it's going to be a rebound shot for Chambers. Chambers is a, and it's going to be out of range. So the puck is going to go over to Barrasso. I'll give Chambers a shot. And for Barrasso, four, four, it is going to go to the left D. So call Paul Coffey is going to pick it up. That's the one thing I really, really like about this game is how they incorporate forechecking. Forechecking is always off a demon, which makes sense. That's what happens in real life. So for an example, Sean Chambers, PF1, he's going to make a pass unless there's one forechecker. So PF1 probably means he's not a very good puck mover because if there's only one forechecker, he's going to turn it over for a shot. And take a look at his stats. He's only got three assists. So he's probably not a great uh, puck handler. He is very good defensively. Um, so that's one thing that they work it in. Same with intimidation. So intimidation, you have pass unless there's two goons or tough guys on the ice. And again, there's three here. So it would take the puck away from Tenorti. So everything that Bob Frost designed when he did it flows so nicely like a real hockey game. That's one of the things I really quite like about uh, hockey bones or hockey face off. So coffee has the puck. And it's a 6-8. So Coffee, if we take a look on his card, a 6-8 is going to be an X is a penalty. So I'm going to check that off. And we're going to see what type of penalty it's going to be. This is even. So we're going to check even and number 6. So you have odd and even on the blue die. Even number 6 is an A. So it's a quick reference on the penalty chart. And an A is coincidental minor. So it's not going to be a power play situation. It's going to be coincidental minors. And to see who gets it, you would roll 1-8. And you check the retaliation chart. So 1-8 would be 3. 5 is the highest ranking guy. So this would be the third highest guy. So if we take a look at minors... The highest guy is going to be um, Tenority with 16, Bellows with 12. The third highest would be Madano. So Madano and Coffee are each going to get coincidental minors. So I'm just going to put them off. So Pittsburgh Coffee is getting two minutes, and Minnesota Madano is going to get two minutes. Coincidental minors. The penalty was at. Um, Four squares. The nice thing when you do order from Hockey Bones, they give you a timer. So it's just before. Here was the four square. So at 136 of the first period. And they also have, if you want the exact time, you can roll and add seconds, get the exact time. Um, I, I don't mess around with that. I like to play quick. So um, I'm just going to write down 136 for the penalty. And we're going to do, we're going to try four on four. I forget. I think back then they probably did. So I'll move Gagne here. Lemieux is going to play with, uh, let's put him out with Recky. We're going to bring a D-man out. So for Pittsburgh, we will bring out, 
Uh, I think we'll bring out Larry Murphy with Samuelson. We're just going to slide him over there. Larry Murphy's a right D. So we're going to have a face-off. And again, what I like to do is just mark off the five time sequences in yellow. And I usually change to a red pen until I know when the penalty's over. Uh, so this is going to be, we're going to try this 5x5. Five five. I might be a little rusty with going to a, uh, a spot where there's no player. I think it's a face-off. Anyway, so the face-off is a 4-6, and a 4-6 off the face-off is going to be right D of the visiting team, unless on the power play. They're not on the power play. So right D, Chambers is going to pick it up. I'm just going to mark up a time sequence. And we have a 3-7. So a 3-7 is a shot with a rebound. So Chambers is going to let that shot go. And he's not in range. So there's a shot for Chambers. And three, the rebound is going to go to the right winger. So Dave gagne has got the rebound. They're going to try and clear it. Five and two is a seven. We do have a screen, so it's going to move down to a six. So we're clearing off of a six. And we roll a four, th seven. And it's not cleared. So it's going to be a rebound shot for Gagne. He is a two, 11. Here comes Gagne on the re rebound shot. He shoots. It's going to be in range because that's a one. It's below the two. So Barrasso's got to come up with a big stop here. 210 on Barrasso's card is a star right D, which means he didn't make the save. That would have been a save. Anything with a star or a G is a goal. So Dave Gagne is going to get the first goal of the game here, four on four. Chambers had the initial shot, so he will get one of the rebounds. And the other assist is going to go to 1-6, which means one assist. Um, so Chambers is going to get the only assist. Time of the goal is at the two-minute mark. And it is one nothing. Now, everybody's played a shift, so I'll just give everybody a shift. And here we go. We're going to start with the face-off. And three, number 11, the face-off is going to go to center of the home team. There is nobody there, so I think we're just going to roll again because there's nobody on the visitor team. If the person's not there and another person is there, you give the puck to him. Uh, if there's nobody there, I believe it's just a, an interception. But this is the face-off. So 6-4, left wing of the visitor team, Brian Bellows picks it up, 4-on-4. Four four. Here he comes. We have a 6-5. So a 6-5 is an 11. The defense, I'll just cross this off for the time, is going to be 5-7-9. And 9-on-4-on-4 four on four would be... You check defense nine on four and four would be a five. So that is going to be a shot on net for Brian Bellows. He's a two five on his range. Oh, and he's in range again. Oh my gosh. Uh, Tom Barrasso's got to come up with another big save here. Three, two. He does not do it. Minnesota jumps out to a quick lead. Kind of shocked. I thought the first game was a fluke. Bellows is going to put one in at 224 is the time of the goal. And three assists, 311 is going to be two assists. And I think we got to roll a second time to see who they are. And three, three, two assists to the first guy and the fourth guy. So the first guy would be Gagne, and the last guy would be Chambers. So Chambers with his second point of the hockey game, Gagne with his second point of the hockey game, and Bellows puts one in from Gagne and Chambers. Gagne scored from Chambers on the other one, and it's 2 nothing Minnesota. They're taking advantage of this 4-on-4. 3-5 four four. Uh, off the faceoff. So 3-5 off the faceoff is going to go left D of the home team. So Ulf Samuelson picks it up for the Penguins. Don't get a penalty, Ulfie. Four, number five is going to be a four. Defense for Minnesota is seven, eight. It's going to be a 12. 
So we're gonna check 12 on four on four is gonna be a seven. So Ulfi is gonna lose the puck. Whenever you lose it, you check the red die. It says right D. He's gonna lose it to the right D and we cross that off for a time sequence. Here comes Sean Chambers, brings it out to number six. Pass unless there's one tough guy or intimidator out there. They don't have any intimidators out there. So the pass is gonna be five. It's gonna go over to the left winger. We check off a time sequence. And that is the end of the penalty. So Coffee and Badano can come back out. Uh, we're gonna give a shift to Murphy. And we're gonna give a shift to, um, I guess we didn't do anybody there for, we just left them out. So Madano comes out, we'll move him over there. Coffee comes out, we'll move Samuelson over. And we got one more time suit against, and then I'll change the lines, I think. Uh, we got a 6-7, so a 6-7 is a shot with a rebound. So Bellows is gonna get another shot on goal. 2-5 is his range, it's out of range. The rebound's gonna go to the right winger. So we check Barrasso's card to three. The right winger, Madano's gonna get the rebound. We're gonna check and see if Pittsburgh clears it. So the clearing is a six. Um, so Bellows took the shot, so I don't think he is part of the screen. Correct me if I'm wrong, but since he shot, he can't screen. So the clearing is gonna be a six and a two, five. Here's a six on the clearing, if you can see it. And clearing range is 312. So 25 is underneath that. So it will get cleared. And it goes over to Lemieux. So I am just going to give everybody a shift. Tenority Chambers, Lemieux, Recky, uh, Stevenson, Samuelson. Coffee just came out, so he only got the one shift. He was in the box. I think Medano should have only had the one, two. He spent two minutes in the box. So we're going to change the lines up, bring out the second line. I'll probably play them for two time sequences. Usually I'll go three, but I'm just going to change it up for the video so that people can see different players out there. Murphy Taglinetti coming out, Pittsburgh. Down 2 nothing already. Francis Jaeger and Eri will be my second line. I'll play two more time sequences. Purpose of the video is just for you to get a, an idea of how Hockey Bones works. It's the only negative I have is it takes me probably 90 minutes to play a game. Um, but it's it's such an ingenious game. Bob Frost did such a good job. It is a lot of fun. Um, it's one of the better hockey games out there. So Ronnie Francis has the puck. He's going to bring it out. And we have a 3-6. So a 3-6 on Francis's card is star D7. So for a D, you just check the defenseman's ratings. Uh, so it, they add up to a 7. So a shot is always equal or greater than D-man rating. So since it's equal, Ronnie Francis is going to get a shot. So I'm just going to check that off. And I'm going to give Francis a shot. And... Oh... Why did I check Francis? I think it may have messed up there, guys. The puck was on Airy, and I checked Francis's card. Um, we'll just stick with what I was doing. Sorry about that. So there's the shot. It's not in range. And sometimes I lose my train of thought here doing these videos. And 2-5 on the rebound is going to go to the center of Minnesota. So Broughton picks it up. He brings it back the other way. And we roll a 2-7. Make sure I check off my time sequences. Still a little rusty playing this game. It's been a while. 2-7 is going to be the at symbol, which is passing factors. You need five passing factors from the other players for him to, um, uh, to, to, um, to get a shot. And we have one passing factor, so he is going to lose it. So Puck is going to go over to Bob Airy. Pittsburgh brings it back. We have a 6-7. Bob Aries got it. 6-7 on Aries card is going to be a shot with a rebound. So Aries is going to get a shot. His range is 2-9. It's out of range. That's a 3. He does get a shot. Now 3, we're going to check for a rebound. Oh, sorry. We've got to roll off the goalie card. <clears throat> so we've got to roll off the goalie card. and Or maybe I just used that other one. 
I guess I would. Um, yeah, let's just use the three from before. It's quicker. So the rebound would go to the right winger. So this roll would be for the clearing. And we have a six. And I don't think that's going to do it. Clearing is 312. Roll the five. So Jagger is going to get the rebound shot. His range is 35. It is a one. So he is in range. So Jagger is going to get it. He's in range. He's going to shoot on John Casey. A 3-5 would be a right D save. Casey is really outplaying Brasso in this series. Two shots by the Pens. They can't score. Here comes Jim Johnson. A 5-5. Five, five. Check off the time sequence. 5-5 five, five for Jim Johnson would be a 6. So we have a 6-7-8. Defense is going to take the puck away. A red die is a 2 so it was going to go to the right D on the other team, and Larry Murphy brings it back for Pittsburgh. We got a 5-5. Five, 5-5 five. Five, five for Larry Murphy, D9. D is only a 7, so that's higher. Murphy's going to get a shot. <coughs> so here comes the shot by Murphy. His range is a 1-7, pretty low. Oh, but it's a 1-5. It's in range. Murphy gets a shot on... John Casey, is it going to be a goal? 3-8, three, 3-8 eight, three, eight is another save by John Casey. Oh, my gosh, he's been unreal. So each of these guys is going to get a shift. I'm at the end of the time sequence before I forget. And here we go with a face-off. John Casey playing unreal today. Three for three on his in-range saves. Face-off is 2-12. Right wing of the home team. Penguins keeping up the pressure. Here comes Yarmer Jagger. Three, number 10 on Jagger's card. Would be 310 is a four. And we already have a seven. Sue's so going to lose it. One right deep. Puck goes over to Dolan. Check off that time sequence. Here comes Ulf Dolan. Three, number 11 for Minnesota. 311 is an icing. So Puck is going to go back in. Icing for North Stars. 2-7 off the faceoff is left D of the home team. Puck goes over to Peter Taglinetti. Good defensive player, not a good offensive player. 2-7. Taglinetti is pass unless there's one four checker. And if there's a four checker, they're going to get a shot. Minnesota has two four checkers. So number five is going to get the shot. The left D is going to shoot. I'm doing things right. Kurt Giles, a 110 off the shot, and it's not in range. We give Giles the shot on goal, and the goalie, 2-5, right winger picks it up. Here comes Yarmar Jaeger. Brings it right back, going to check off the time so you can. So don't forget, a 4-8 on Jaeger is going to be a D7. So defense, just the D-man when you have the D in front. We have a seven, so it's equal, equal or greater. He shoots. Jagger is going to get a shot on net. His second shot of the hockey game, three five. He's got a really good sequence. He is in range, so his second in range shot for Jagger. And again, I'm just going to mark that on my score sheet. There's the second shot, and the little dots just mean in range shots. So I can see how good the goalies are playing. So Casey's got to make another in-range save. 5-4. That doesn't sound good. 5-4. It's a star center. A star or a G is a goal. Yarmer Jagger beats John Casey up high. And the Penguins get back into this hockey game with a goal at 7:36. The time of the goal. Yarmer Jagger puts it in. Assists. A six number six. There is going to be two assists, and they're going to go to one, six, number four, and number two. So four is the highest guy. Two is the second lowest. So I check for the assists. Highest guy is Francis. He's getting one, and the second lowest would be Airy. So it's going to be Jagger from Francis and Airy. The newly formed line puts one in for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Jaeger from Francis and Airy, and it is now a 2-1 hockey game. There we go with the face-off, one number seven. It's going to go right wing of the home team. Penguins putting on more pressure. Yarmar Jaeger's got it again, 5-5. Five, five. So a 5-5 five, five on Jaeger's card. 
is a D8. The defense is a 7. So it is going to be a shot because that number is equal or greater than the D. Yarmar Jaeger with another shot. 5. This one, his third shot of the game. It's not going to be in range. Jaeger's range is 3 to 5. So it's not in range. And we check Casey's card. 6, number 7. It is going to be a rebound. Number four, left D is going to pick it up. Teglin it. He's going to get the rebound. Let's see if Minnesota can clear it. We got six on the clearing and no screens. So it's going to be a six on the clearing and six is a 312. They would clear it. And it's a five, so it's not going to be cleared. So it's going to be a rebound shot for Taglinetti. He's a 110. There's a shot by Taglinetti. And it is not going to be in range. Check Casey's card. You're only allowed one rebound. 611 right D of the other team. So if this comes up, his team doesn't get it. It'll be the other team that picks it up. Murphy's got it. That is the end of the time sequence. So I will check off one for everybody. These guys have all played two sequences. These guys have all played. Murphy got an extra because he played one on the power play. He's now up to three. And I think I'll just stop the video there. Keeps it nice and short. Hopefully you understand how the game works. I might maybe do the last little bit at the end. This is Hockey Bones. If you like this video or you found it helpful, please give it a like. And enjoy the rest of your day, you guys. This is the 1990-91 cards. These are the old cards I had from Pace Off. Had had these forever. And you can get the new ones at Hockey Bones, and I'll put the address in the description.